Japanese swords, known as katana, have a rich history steeped in tradition. These weapons were originally used in battles and duels, but they also held symbolic significance as emblems of the authority of the emperor and the samurai class. Owning a famous sword symbolized power, even for feudal warlords. Historical figures like Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who emerged victorious during Japan's Warring States period, generously gifted renowned swords acquired as spoils of war to their loyal vassals. These Meibutsu swords became tokens of gratitude, rewards in place of land, and treasured heirlooms passed down through generations. In this video, we will introduce the top three most expensive Japanese swords in history. Number three, Okanehira, 270 million yen. The Okanehira is a Japanese sword believed to have been crafted in the late Heian period. It was created by the renowned swordsmith Kanehira, who was active during the late Heian era. The old Kanehira is often referred to as a miraculous sword crafted by Kanehira, and it is said that even Kanehira himself could never replicate it or create another one like it. In the early Showa period, attempts were made to replicate the old Kanehira, but it was reported that modern swordsmiths couldn't reproduce a sword of this size with the same strength and likeness. Current swordsmith trying to create a tachi with the same length and width as the old Kanehira ended up with a thicker blade to maintain its strength, resulting in a weight exceeding 4.4 pounds. However, the Okanehira achieved a weight of just 2.97 pounds through innovation such as thinning the blade and adding grooves. While the first names that come to mind when thinking of famous Japanese swords are often the five swords under heaven, Tenka Goken, the Okanehira stands as a miraculous sword that rivals them. This incredible sword, created during the Heian period when technology was far less advanced than today, remains highly treasured in the modern era and is considered a national treasure among national treasures. The Okanehira has a storied history, having been owned by the warlord Ikeda Terumasa during the Azuchi Momoyama period. He was one of the most powerful daimyo in Western Japan governing a domain of 920,000 koku, a unit of rice, and serving as the first lord of Himeji Castle, which he extensively renovated into the magnificent structure we know today. Terumasa was known for valuing his retainers above all else, often prioritizing their welfare over valuable treasures of gold and silver. However, there is a remarkable exception in the case of the Okanehira. It is said that Ikeda Terumasa regarded this sword as priceless and he was willing to pay a significant sum to acquire it. The Ikeda family continued to treasure the Okanehira as a closely guarded family heirloom, even refusing the request of Emperor Meiji to see the sword, insisting that he must come to their domain in Okayama to view it. There is a story that illustrates the exceptional value of the Okanehira. After World War II, General Douglas MacArthur, the Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers SCAP, personally implored the Ikeda family to relinquish the Okanehira. However, the Ikeda family staunchly refused, stating that they would only consider it if the sword was exchanged for the Statue of Liberty. When the GHQ General Headquarters decided to confiscate Japanese weapons, including swords, a sympathetic Provost Marshal Colonel Caldwell, who understood the importance of Japanese swords, cooperated in ensuring the protection of the old Kanehira. Ultimately, in 1967, the Japanese Ministry of Education purchased the old Kanehira from the Ikeda family for 65 million yen. When adjusted for inflation, this amounts to approximately 270 million yen today. This price tag remained a record high for Japanese swords until very recently, truly reflecting the extraordinary value befitting the finest of Japanese swords. The Okanehira is currently housed in the Tokyo National Museum. Number 2. Yamambagiri Kunihiro, 300 million yen. 
The Yamambageri Kunihiro is a sword forged during the Azuchi Momoyama period by the renowned mastersmith Horikawa Kunihiro upon request from Ashikaga Castle's lord Nagao Akinaga. Horikawa Kunihiro was immensely famous during his lifetime, with many warlords and daimyos commissioning blades from him. Interestingly, the Yamambageri Kunihiro is a replica of another blade called the Yamambageri Chogi. While it's an usushi, a reproduction of an esteemed blade, it's celebrated as one of Kunihiro's masterpieces, renowned for its captivating allure. Nagao Akinaga, who owned this blade, served the Hojo clan. However, he faced defeat in the Battle of Odawara Conquest, leading to the confiscation of his territories. Subsequently, the sword came into the possession of a retainer of the Hojo clan, Ishihara Jinzaemon. The name Yamambagiri Kunihiro originates from a legend where Jinzaemon slayed a Yamamba, an ancient Japanese mountain witch. According to the tale, while walking in the mountains with his pregnant wife, she suddenly went into labor. By chance, they found a cottage where an old woman lived. Leaving his wife with the old woman, Ishihara hurriedly left to find medicine. When he returned in haste, he found the old woman voraciously eating his newborn child. In a fit of rage, he slayed the witch using his blade, leading to its subsequent name, Yamambagiri, or the Mountain Witch Cutter. In 2017, when the Yamambagiri Kunihiro was displayed at the Ashikaga City Museum for the first time in nearly 20 years, it attracted a staggering 37,800 visitors, turning the event into a grand success. In the latest news from July 2023, the city of Ashikaga in Tochiki Prefecture and the Ashikaga Citizen Cultural Foundation announced their plans to acquire the Yamambagiri Kunihiro for 300 million yen. Negotiations with the current owner are underway with the intent to finalize the purchase within the year. Of the purchase price, 200 million yen will be sourced from the foundation's assets, while the remaining 100 million yen will be raised by the city through crowdfunding. A sales contract is expected to be signed within this fiscal year and post-purchase, the blade will be owned by the foundation. They've also disclosed plans to host an exhibition by the end of the next fiscal year. To guide this significant purchase, the city set up an evaluation committee consisting of five sword experts. Their task was to weigh in on the importance of the acquisition and its asset value. Their assessment, given that the sword is of national treasure caliber, and considering its potential economic impact, the 300 million yen price tag is justified. Number 1. Yamatorige. 500 million yen. The Yamatorige, valued at 500 million yen, is a celebrated blade from the Kamakura period and is designated a national treasure of Japan. This masterful creation is believed to be the work of the renowned Fukuoka Ichimonji school that flourished during its era. Originating in Bizen province, which is modern-day Okayama prefecture, this school produced many noticeable swordsmiths. This sword is often hailed as the pinnacle of Bizen swords. The name Yamatorige, which translates to mountain bird feather, is derived from its blade pattern which is reminiscent of the delicate and splendid feathers of a mountain bird. This pattern, known as hamon, is created during the sword's tempering process, where the heated blade is quenched in water. It's one of the most vital features when appreciating a Japanese sword. In 1556, during a campaign in Joshu Shirai, the daimyo Uesugi Kenshin, received the Yamatorige as a gift from the Lord of Shirai Castle, Nagao Norikage, known for his formidable prowess in battle and often referred to as the God of War. Uesuki Kenshin cherished this sword deeply. It later 
became one of the treasured 35 swords of Uesugi Kagekatsu, Kenshin's adopted son and the head of the Uesugi clan. From there, it has been passed down as a cherished heirloom of the Uesugi family. Following the end of World War II, the Yamaturige moved from the Uesugi family to a sword enthusiast in Okayama Prefecture. Later, in 1997, it was entrusted to the Okayama Prefectural Museum. In Satoshi City, Okayama, where the Yamatorige was originally forged, a campaign called the Yamatorige Return Home Project was launched in November 2018 to buy back the locally born treasured blade. The project gained widespread support, not only from within Okayama Prefecture, but from all over Japan and even internationally. Donations exceeded the target of 500 million yen. It was announced on March 17, 2020, that a purchase agreement was established with a private owner residing in Okayama. The price for which the Yamatorige was bought is believed to be the highest ever for a Japanese sword. Occasionally, privately owned Japanese swords are purchased at high prices from abroad, resulting in them leaving Japan. By municipalities acquiring these historic blades, they prevent these invaluable artifacts from flowing overseas. Now, this sword is in the possession of Satoshi City. It is stored in the Bizen Osofune Sword Museum and is displayed to the public approximately once a year. Apart from the three swords introduced today, there are many invaluable swords that are priceless. For example, the Mikazuki Munechika, a national treasure currently held at the Tokyo National Museum, is not on the market. However, if it were to be priced, it's believed that it could command a value equal to or even exceeding that of the Yamatorige, meaning it could be worth over 500 million yen. In addition, there are other extremely valuable swords, such as those classified as imperial properties, or gyobutsu, which belong to the emperor. While they don't have a specific price tag, their historical and artistic value is immense. As we've explored, these blades are not just weapons, but masterpieces of art and symbols of Japan's rich history. If you're ever in Japan, I highly recommend visiting the museums and exhibitions that showcase these treasures. Remember, while some swords have price tags, their historical and artistic value is truly immeasurable. We hope you enjoyed this exploration into the world of Japanese swords. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content about the history of Japanese swords. Until next time, sayonara.